Large Tudor-style windows. Got a nice view of the city. Hmm, a piece of sheet music. Let's see, Lucido L'Amour. Must be Western music. A Larson Grand Piano. Wow, that's even better than a Stoffway. Good evening, ladies and germs. I'm your entertainer tonight, Mr. Franco Spinoza. I'm going to be playing some songs that I know you'll love. Listen to this one. Hard and cold, it's what it does to me. Hard and cold, the shower sprays on me. La, la, hey, la, 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 hell with it. Passion's Breath Room Deodorizer. There's nothing like a fluffy, downy scented towel. Oh, yuck, the towel smells like mildew and fine hops. Looks like a couple of objects have fallen into the drain. With that screwdriver, I could undo the screws on this drain cover and get that roll of film. This face looks like it was mounted here to hold flowers or something. Someone's dropped a cork into this mounted base. The opening's too narrow to get my hand in. I'd break it, but it looks like it's made out of ceramide, that new unbreakable plastic. The cork looks like a typical champagne cork with some wire mesh on it. Hmm, wire mesh. Looks like someone left their shorts in the hot tub. I think I'll leave them right where they are. Oh, sick! A yucky band-aid! Beer cans! Oh, no, they're empty. Well, I guess one of the escort girls left her bikini top. As I fill up the mounted vase, the champagne cork flows to the top. I'm just going to reach in and pick it up. If I can just get this piece of wire. There we go.
it's a shoelace. I hope it hasn't been used inappropriately. Looks like a roll of film down there. I believe it's a roll of nutty pictures. It's the Photomatic Plus Film Developing Kit. How convenient. These pictures are sick. Francesca will be so happy. Well, gorgeous, you're back. <laughs> Did you get the evidence I need? I think I might. Let me look inside my overcoat. Oh, excellent! This will do the job nicely. <laughs> I'll answer all your questions now. I was up late having some espresso, then I saw you get jumped. The guy who hit you was real small, maybe a five, six, 130 pounds. I didn't see his face. He took your package you were carrying, then ran off. It looked like a professional hit, but he wasn't trying to kill you. Believe me, if he wanted to, he could have. After the first guy took off, I saw another guy come running down from your office. He bent over you and went through your coat. Then he ran off too. I recognized the second guy. He was a mutant named Pug. In the fact, I remember seeing him hanging around your office for the past few days. Anyway, I went over to make sure you were okay. Sal showed up a few minutes later and I made him carry you up to your office. That's all I know. Hiya, matey! Well, you see my new nose! I'm so excited! Mmm! I'm gonna look and feel like a new man! Well, that's swell, Beak. Hope you're feeling grateful enough to answer some more questions. Yeah, sure! Anything! Well, Pug and I used to hang out sometimes. But I haven't seen him for a while. I heard he's gotten a job of some kind. 
He doesn't work very often and he usually sleeps in a box down by the Snow White warehouse. Following Beak's instructions, I hang around the warehouse. Not long after, a gust of wind carries a horrible stench into my nasal passages. I turn and see a shadowy figure waddle into the alley. The way you look at me, it makes me nervous. <laughs> should, because when I'm done with you, you'll find breathing more painful than you ever imagined. I think you should think twice before threatening me. I think maybe I'll turn that mug of yours into goulash. The way you're threatened has caused me to wet myself. Why are you treating me like I'm some kind of criminal? I don't know, because you are one. You're a cynical person, if you'll forgive my saying so. Okay, I forgive you. Now would you please just hand over my wallet? Here's your wallet. You will see I have spent very little of your money. Tell me, how did you find me? Well, you're pretty sneaky, but someone saw you rob me. They also said you were tailing me. I was hired to follow you. I provide people with information through ways of my own. <laughs> oh, and stealing my wallet was in the job description. No, I'm just looking for ways to make extra money. <laughs> I was hired by an old P.I. who called himself the Colonel. He paid me to follow you and report back on everyone I saw you talk to. He also wanted me to tell him if I saw you with the little statue of a bird. He told me very little else, though he said that he had to find out if you could be trusted. There, I have told you everything I know. Now let me go, and I shall not bother you again. The Colonel was my mentor in the detective biz. When I was a young, idealistic crime fighter, I didn't understand some of the Colonel's unethical P.I. methods. I reported the Colonel to the P.I. licensing board and his license was temporarily revoked. In the years since, I've come to understand and even occasionally use the Colonel's questionable methods, but we've never made up. I haven't seen the Colonel's office since we fell out 15 years ago. From the look of the exterior, the Colonel's kept it up nicely. I knock on the door and it swings open. The place is trashed. Hmm. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to put off that trip to the Caribbean. <coughs> Maybe permanently. My God, what happened? Who did this to you? A chameleon. Uh, he's some kind of shapeshifter. I swear it's the devil himself. What did he want? Why did he attack you? Oh, he thought I had it. When he found out I didn't, he tried to torture me and to tell him where it was. And he got impatient, stuck a knife in my chest. I must have passed out. I ain't enough sleep last night. Well, what was he looking for? I oh, the winter chip. The cult wants it now. They're planning a doomsday party. They're afraid whoever's got the chip might stop them. You're gonna have to find it and get it to Capricorn. Yeah, they know what to do with it. <sighs> but I don't know where to look. You gotta give me some help. Uh, there's no time. There's a disc by the bookcase. It's got information on that winter chip. Don't fail me, Tex. I hope to God you've learned something after all these years. <sighs> I fly the colonel to the hospital and the attendants rush him into surgery, but won't tell me what his chances are. I know I should go and search the colonel's office for the disc he referred to, but I'm having a hard time keeping my eyelids popped open. I decide to go back to my office for a couple of hours of shut-eye. As I open the door, I catch a whiff of expensive perfume, then feel my jaw slam into a brick wall. 
When my vision clears, I'm seated across from a beautiful oriental woman with matching goons on either side of me. Good evening, Mr. Murphy. Please, have a seat. Well, who the hell are you and what are you doing in my office? You are either braver or more foolish than I thought. No one talks to Eddie Ching like that. Well, very few people break into my office and live, so I guess we're even. The score between us is hardly even, Mr. Murphy. I have learned that you were hired to steal a statuette for my apartment. I admire the skill you display in doing so, but I must now ask you to return the bird to me. Thanks for the compliment, but I don't have your stupid bird. Someone stole it from me after I left your place. You'll just have to run down to Goodwill and get yourself a new one. It's gone? You imbecile! Have you no idea what you've done? You were set up. The person who hired you belongs to a group so powerful, they may hold the fate of the world in their hands. The statuette is worthless, except to this cult. And I went to great lengths to keep it from them. And all it took was one idiotic P.I. to give these fanatics the talisman they need to lose the demons of hell upon the earth. I'm sorry, who knew? You obviously don't understand what I'm saying. With the statuette, the cult will fulfill its prophecies, unleashing an unimaginable flood of destruction. The prophecy is supposed to be fulfilled in six days. If the statuette is not recovered before then, nothing will matter. We'll all be dead. Well, that's a fascinating story, but uh, why are you telling me? The cult knows about me. They tried several times to steal the statuette once they learned I had it. They will not allow me or my operatives to obstruct their plans. You, however, they do not consider to be a threat. The cult is behind the crusade for genetic purity. I don't know any more than what I've told you, except for the identity of the man who set you up. He is known as the Chameleon. If you can find him, you will be within reach of the statuette. You should realize that your blunder makes you responsible for 10 billion lives. Hope for your own sake that you can succeed where more powerful people cannot. Let this be a reminder to you not to repeat your mistakes. If you fail, I will see you in hell. So did he have the chip or not? I never found out. My usual methods of persuasion weren't working, so I had to get a little more forceful. Next thing I know, his lights go out. I think I killed him. Dead men don't help us. We've got to find out about that chip. If the colonel didn't have the chip, then he probably sent it to Murphy. Stick around and keep tabs on him until the last second. But don't kill him. If the chip doesn't show up, make sure Murphy doesn't blunder into our path. If you find the chip, destroy it. Then you can do what you want with Murphy. <laughs>